Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of February 1st, 2021. We're getting close to 100 of these actually, so I'm really excited. I'll let you know when we get there. I've got four topics today. One of them, not so funny. Uh, there's a proposed bill in Mississippi, two proposed bills actually in Mississippi, that are extremely scary for drone pilots. So we'll talk about that. If you're in Mississippi, I'm gonna need you to do a couple things. Uh, we'll talk about the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, which is finally becoming available. We have pricing. I'll give you some information as well. I talked about this a couple weeks ago. I want to talk about mapping some damage that was done to Highway 1 in California and what came out of it, which is really cool. And we'll talk about a drones for good or two drones for good stories and we'll wrap it up. So let's get started. First thing this week is something in Mississippi and there's two drone laws that are being proposed. Uh, for, uh, one is in the Senate, one is in the House. And, uh, and they're proposing something that you're not gonna like. And, uh, and when I first read about this, I was like, oh, there we go again. This is uh, something that we've seen before with the ULC. The ULC was the Uniform Law Commission. We talked about them, I wanna say a year and a half ago maybe, and then they all went quiet. And then this feels a whole lot like something that the ULC would be behind. Now, let me rewind. Uh, the ULC was proposing at the time to allow uh, property owners to basically control the airspace. And this is what's coming up right here with this uh, with this Senate law that is being proposed is that the owners of the land would have some kind of airspace ownership. Now, as you can imagine, this is not something that is good for the UAS industry. We don't want every single person to be able to prohibit the access to the airspace. That's bad for drones, but that's also bad for everybody else. Obviously, this there would be some preemption from federal law. The FAA is in control of the airspace, so it's going to be interesting. Um, Vic Moss from the DSPA has been talking about this. Uh, the article that I'm linking down here has a bunch of uh, quotes from him, and he's basically saying that this is hopefully going to die uh, a fast but painful death uh, and then never basically show up again. But uh, there's another proposed bill that's in there, and that's a House Bill 291, and that would basically restrict collecting data. So you, as the UAS operator, would restrict you from collecting data from correctional facilities and critical infrastructures. And you're gonna say, well, Greg, that's actually not too bad, right? Critical, critical infrastructures probably should be protected. Yeah, except when you start looking at the definition of critical infrastructures and then you realize that, well, this is not a good thing. There's 13 categories that are highlighted in terms of what is a critical infrastructure, and two of them kind of stand out. One of them, it says, I'm gonna read quote to quote, commercial transport vessels operating on an inland waterway or ocean. That's very vague, okay? That is very, very vague. And that would be considered a critical infrastructure, which means you couldn't take pictures of it or take videos of it. The other one is, it says, any facilities enclosed by a fence or physical barrier or marked by a sign. If there's a posted sign, then basically it becomes a critical infrastructure, which is a clear overreach of the definition of a critical infrastructure. Now, if you remember, uh, I wanna say about two or three months ago, maybe it could be even more than that. I, I lose track of time sometimes. But I had talked about a, um, a bill that was put in place, or maybe it was actually a law, that the FAA was supposed to be putting in place and that would put some um, standards as to what could become a critical infrastructure. And this is something that we really, really need at the moment because as it is, every state can basically decide what is a critical infrastructure and they can create their own restriction and, and go overboard like this one, which is completely ridiculous. So the bottom line with this is we need to take action. So if you live in one of these, uh, if you live in Mississippi, then I want you to, for House Bill 291, I'm gonna put down here, the, the person in charge of that bill is Representative Nick Bain, and I want you to politely reach out to him and tell him that uh, this is not acceptable. For the Senate bill, the SB 2262, the person that is a senator, this is Senator Bryce Wiggins, and again, I'm gonna put a link down here and I want you to reach out to these people and let them, let them know what is going on. If you're a resident in Mississippi, I also want you to talk to your local legislator and contact them and tell them, again, respectfully, about 
what is going on and tell them that uh, you disagree. So uh, this is important. So anybody that lives in these areas need to reach out to these people and let them know what is uh, happening. So I'm going to put a link down here to the Drone Life article. Uh, you can find more information about it. But uh, this is this could be setting a really bad precedent that other states could also approve. So don't think that this is outside of uh, where you are. Uh, this could be reaching your state if somebody in your state decided they wanted to do this. OK, next story. The DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced uh, came out, finally released. Now, this is a drone that's going to be more geared towards agriculture, uh, construction, mining, inspection, uh, surveying even. This has an upgraded camera on it. It has a dual camera, it has a FLIR camera, and it has a, an RGB camera. Now the camera, uh, the RGB camera uses the uh, 48 megapixel, it's a 12 megapixel sensor, but uh, creates 48 megapixel uh, pictures, which is what you find on the Mavic Air 2. Uh, it also has the ability to put an RTK module on top of it, so great for doing uh, mapping and doing surveying, uh, if, if that's what you're into. The price, according to Drone Excel, without the RTK module, which is much more expensive, is $6,200. So that's the base price for the dual camera. And then if you want to add the RTK, couldn't find a pricing for the RTK, but uh, if you're interested in that, I'm sure that's going to add and bring it a lot closer to 10,000, which is typically what uh, the, the cheaper version of, of these drone uh, is going to cost. So that's uh, that's that. Speaking of mapping and surveying, there was some damage on uh, Highway 1 in California near Big Sur. A large portion of the, the road fell out and got basically swept down by a torrential rain. And uh, the whole road was closed, obviously. And somebody went out there, Kathleen Twert, I hope I'm, I'm saying her name correctly. Uh, she shared a 3D model on social media, which was really cool, of the whole damage area using Sketchfab. And, um, and using this technology, you know, if you have access to the right equipment, uh, Pix4D, for example, will do this. You can measure distances. You can measure a volume of dirt that has been removed. Uh, this is actually something that I did a couple years ago here locally. We had uh, kind of the same thing, a big landslide, and took a a portion of our trail, a, a very famous trail here in Prescott. And I went out there with a the drone, did some measurements and, and provided it to the city so that they could figure out how much dirt needed to be moved uh, into the area. So kind of a, a really cool technology, just a good use of technology here uh, that you can see. And then another good use of technology, we have Drones for Good, two stories from two different places in the country, very similar uh, technique and very similar outcome, which was really good. Uh, people getting lost. It's winter, uh, it gets cold outside very quickly. So when people, it's either older people or younger people get lost, maybe in the woods or whatever, it's imperative to find them quickly uh, before hypothermia sets in and before they get too cold. So uh, the first story is in North Carolina where a 70-year-old man went out on his ATV, I think it was, and then was reported missing. Uh, that same night, the sheriff county, so that's in uh, Alexandra County, the sheriff's office, was able to go out there with their newly acquired, they just got the, the thermal camera not too long ago, and they were able to find him. The temperatures were starting to drop uh, below the 30s. So if you know anything about survival, if you're outside in these temperatures, uh, especially if you're maybe older and, and not in great shape, uh, this is critical to be found quickly. So found him, sent him to the hospital, and, uh, and he seemed to be fine. Uh, another story, very similar uh, in Tennessee, and then here was a younger person. They said juvenile uh, in the article. Uh, they found they found him with the drone or her. I'm not sure actually of the gender, but uh, with a FLIR camera attached to the drone, and uh, were able to find him very quickly. They said it only took 13 minutes to go up and then find the person in the area. So. Great use of drones, great use of public safety drones. So I'm really glad that these agencies were able to acquire the equipment and uh, save, probably save these two people's life. Uh, probably a very different outcome if they can be found uh, overnight. So just some great news. So that's it. That's all I have for you this week. Um, as always, like, subscribe, do whatever you like to do down here. Leave a comment. Again, love and uh, participating with you guys and chatting about these news. 
And just like last week, we created a new episode for airplanes. So when you're done here, you can head over to our, uh, our airplane channel, Pilot Institute Airplane. It's a different channel uh, where we post airplane information. So uh, drone news turns into airplane news in the next episode. And uh, go out there, give us a like. And, and, and if you're interested in drones, this is probably technology you would be interested in. So make sure you head over there. And then uh, we're going to have these every single week as well, released at the same time. So you can watch one. And then if you don't have enough of us, then you can head over to the other one. If you're sick of me after this one, then stop right here and then wait until next week. Okay, that's all I have. I'll see you guys uh, next week and uh, fly safe.